appreciating oneself is haram. But for the sake of need, people can look within mirrors. If they want to tend a wound or a dressing or to make sure that they don't have any impediment on their skin or their faces during a haram, all of this is fine. But to look into the mirror because we want to see how we look, that is not allowed. And normally we naturally do look into mirrors, don't we, when we go inside the, inside the lifts. We naturally look into the mirrors. I mean, it's not that big a deal. If we look into the mirror, then quickly become mindful and look away again. Yes? But it doesn't mean that we fo walk blindfolded either. I had a student once. Um, I had a student and he had, I'm coming to your work. So if you wear hijab, like ah. work my hijab, or like look at the mirror just to see if my hair shag or not shag. So if you, every time you look into the mirror, it's a camel that you have to sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can look into the mirror, that's fine. That's fine to, to, to make sure that the hijab is proper, yes? But you shouldn't become uh, so overly cautious that you keep on looking into the mirror all the time, yeah? Be careful about that. And I was talking about my student. He came to um, the institute once with a big bump on his head and in a last class. I said, well, what happened? He said, I walked into a lamppost. I said, well, how did that happen? He said, because I was told that the Prophet always looked down when he walked. <laughs> so obviously, we do what the Prophet has asked us, but within reason. We don't look down and walk into people and objects, right? So don't look into the mirror within reason. But sometimes, inadvertently, we are bound to glance within the, um, the mirrors and then just look away. That's about it. It's as simple as that. Wearing shoes, slippers, or socks for men, yes? Not for women. Women may wear shoes, slippers, and socks. That's fine in a state of ihram. Men cannot wear anything that covers the top of their feet. Now, here, I would like you to check this out properly. Normally, it is within the minds that we need to wear flip-flops. They are very uncomfortable, especially when walking from Makkah to Arafah, Arafah, Muzdalifah, and Muzdalifah to Mina, and it's unbearable to walk in those flip-flops by some people. The requirement is that the full portion of the foot is not covered. So we can wear sandals with minimum straps. They should be absolutely fine. They should be absolutely fine. There shouldn't be any problem, but please do check it out. I normally do wear sandals um, after checking out the hadith and the rest of it. The imams had ordained or the prophet had ordained that somebody was wearing shoes. He said, just cut the top part off and then you can wear it because just expose the top of your feet. We can't wear anything that covers the top part of the feet and the ankles. However, we can wear slippers that cover the bottom part of the feet and even if they're not flip-flops. But according to what we see the Iranians doing, you will see Iranians wearing sandals that actually have straps and cover the top of their feet. The Iranian hujaj, they, they have all these white slippers that they wear. They are perfectly fine. There shouldn't be any problem with that. Does anybody want to say anything on that? Um, you said to avoid wearing leather, is that applied to the sandals? No, because sandals are not garments of ihram. Yes? But of course, if it is najis leather, you will have to be mindful to wash your feet before, um, uh, what shall I call it? Um, actually, in the state of ihram, it would be difficult it would be very difficult to say that we can wear even leather sandals which are nudges. Yes. Yes, in, uh, leather sandals provided that the leather is halal. So if we buy it from it's here, fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. And then you have to be certain that it's nudges rather than... Yeah, yeah. You have to be certain that it is nudges. If you're not certain, then that's fine. You can go here in the marketplace and buy and wear. And from England, you still have to be certain that it's not Yeah, absolutely. The law, as far as England is concerned, products purchased from England. If it is leather 
from England, it will not suffice because you know it, 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 it doesn't fulfill the requirements. If it is imported leather within the UK, then you can use, you, you can use the doubt to your benefit. If we buy leather sandals in UK and the leather has been imported and we don't know where from, then in that case we can wear such shoes or slippers. But if they are made in the UK, then you won't be able to wear it because it doesn't sufficiently cover the requirements. Well, even if they're made in the UK, the leather could be imported. You wouldn't know that. Hmm. Right. If you no, made in the UK, <coughs> if the leather is from the UK. But you'd never know that because nobody would actually leave the letter. Okay, the bottom line is, the bottom line is just wear them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I suppose the same applies to wearing them. They can't wear leather shoes. That's right. That's right. In Ahram, wear, but now he's clarified it. So long as it doesn't say, made in Britain, from British cows, <laughs> leather, you're fine. If it says cow leather, that's fine. Okay? Thank you, Abbas. <laughs> for making life making easy. Life easier. <laughs> now, two more things that are not allowed are outrage and quarreling. Uh, according to this, is usuq and, what was it? Sorry? Uh, fusuq and jidal. Fusuq and jidal, that come categorically within the Quran. Fusuq and jidal, basically what they mean is to boast and to undermine the other person and to take an oath in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, alhamdulillah, I'm sure none of you have this habit of saying wallah, billah, things like that. And the Arabs who do have the habit of saying wallah, wallah, wallah all the time, it doesn't apply here. It can be a figure of speech, wallah, yes? Avoid it. What we mean is, when people, in order to establish a claim which is legitimate, to say wallah, but it's a legitimate claim in order to show their superiority above the other person, then that becomes haram. Yes? Then that becomes haram, taking an oath in that condition. However, if they are required to take an oath, in order to establish justice, then that is a requirement that doesn't fall within this law. God forbid, if any of you are caught in a situation where you see somebody being blamed for something and you know that they are free of that blame, for example, somebody is being accused of stealing and you're in Ahram and you're the only witness, God forbid something like this should happen and you're required to take an oath, you can do so there, and you need to do so. But taking an oath, for the sake of taking an oath, is not allowed. Quarreling is not allowed, fighting, cursing, swearing, is not allowed at all. So now, when we are around the Kaaba doing tawaf, and when we get pushed and shoved, and people strangle us, no matter what happens, we are not allowed to retort shout, abuse, or anything. We are supposed to be calm. The only thing we can say is we can say, Oh, slave of Allah, be mindful. Or, O oh, maid of Allah, be mindful. That's about all we can say. Do believe, uh, believe me, those Nigerian women, <laughs> they can be very rough. And when they walk past you, it's like Moses splitting the night in two. <laughs> Everything in their way is flung to the left and to the right. Those are the Nigerian women, and they are rough. Believe me, may God have mercy on their men. <laughs> the other ones are the Indonesian ones. Now, you know, look at the contrast. These are big seven-footer women, and those are little midgets. <laughs> but they are equally terrifying. I, I, I don't know if anybody watches the recess those kindergarten kids. Oh my goodness. They are like that. Now, what's the problem with Indonesian ones? They are like the tsunami. <laughs> they come in floods and waves. You will never find a single Indonesian woman, or a woman. You will find them at least in a group of 100. 
So now when they are crossing, bear in mind you stand no chance.